Good day and greetings from the Great White North. My name is Prickly Pooh and welcome to day 107 of A Year of Change. Today we're going to talk about something, um, we're going to sort of go a little over here direction me bit. Um, I was going to say off topic, but we haven't got a topic yet. Um, we're going to deviate a little bit from what we've normally been doing on Mondays. Um, we generally talk about something that affects us um, because of our weight, but generally speaking, it's something psychological or emotional or something like a social interaction that we have. And one thing we haven't actually started talking about are a lot of the health issues that come along with this. Um, I mean, we have things like, you know, being tired and, you know, eating till we're sick and things like that. We've sort of touched on those, but none of the actual medical conditions. So I thought I just found a cat hair on my face. Awesome. Anyway, um, I think we should probably start with something a little innocuous for the time being. Um, by that, I mean nothing that's really going to be gross, like bed sores or boils or plagues or whatever it is. But um, it's just something to sort of ease ourselves into this. And that is sleep apnea. Now, some of you may have this. Some of you may not. Some of you may not know what this is. Basically, all this is is whenever you sleep at night, um, generally if you sleep on your back especially, um, normally your breathing is normal, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, but when we're overweight... Now, there are a number of different causes for this, but we're focusing mainly on being overweight for this. So, when you're fat, then there's a lot of extra tissue in your throat, whether it's from, uh, you know, just the muscles growing or, more likely, a lot of fat deposits, things like that. So, when you sleep, um, the normal airway can get blocked because the that tissue sort of relaxes. And if you get an excess amount of it, it can block the airway. When that happens, that's usually when you'll wake up and sort of gasp for air and snort and snore and everything else and snuffle your way awake and then generally go back to sleep. Now, everybody does this. At some point during the night, there's always some sleep interruption. Um, generally, it's if you're turning over or, you know, something like that does happen. But sleep apnea is a little bit different. Um, this happens hourly. And the definition says at minimum five times an hour. Minimum, minimum at least five times an hour. And for some people, it can be 30 or more. So every couple of minutes, they're literally snorting themselves awake and they lose a lot of sleep. They lose a lot of air, um, you know, when they're doing this. So sometimes you'll wake up with a headache. Um, you're, it, it's linked to a whole slew of other problems that go along with it. So aside from just being tired all the time, um, as I said, you can always wake up with a headache. Um, it can cause irritability, memory loss, um, it can extend right into, you know, brain damage and everything else. So there are some people that will have, um, a machine. It's called a CPAP machine. It's continuous positive airflow pressure. Uh -huh. I didn't think I was going to remember that. And what it does, it's usually, we've all seen them. There was one in a documentary that we had a couple of weeks ago. One of the people there was wearing it and it goes over your face and it, basically forces air into your lungs as you sleep just to prevent that muscle tissue from from relaxing too much and blocking the airway so there are a number of different treatments for it but the main one that i want to focus on is uh, the weight because there are two types of sleep apnea one is the general one the obstructive sleep apnea that's what is normally caused by obesity um, it can cause, be caused just by, you know, the muscles in your throat relaxing, things like that. That's generally um, something that's, as the name implies, blocking your airway. There's another kind that we aren't going to really touch on called, I think it's central sleep apnea. And that's where your brain just fails to send the signal to your throat to stay open. So we aren't going to really focus on that one. We're going to focus primarily on the obstructive sleep apnea. So... The main cause for a lot of that, and this isn't across the board, obviously, skinny people get this too, but for people that are fat or obese, um, the, that's the main cause for sleep apnea because we have so much material in our necks. <laughs> for, there's a nice medical term. I want to say your throat or your trachea or what was it? Yeah, it would be called your trachea. Um, that if you have 
the, the fatty deposits, it adds weight to it. So when you're laying down, then when your throat relaxes, as everyone's does, that extra weight pulls it down and presses up against your windpipe. And what that will do is that will block the airway. So there are things that you can do. You can sleep on your side or sleep on your stomach or, you know, I don't know when the last time is that I slept on my stomach. That's for thin people. We'll get there eventually. Don't worry. But sleeping on your side helps. Um, having the machine would help. Um, but the primary thing that every every person did, this is on the Harvard website. It's on the Mayo Clinic, Johns Hopkins. All of them say the exact same thing. Just like everything else that causes our problem, we need to lose weight. They say that a significant loss in body weight, um, actually not even really, well, they say about 10% of body weight can greatly improve, you know, the problems that you run into with sleep apnea. And it sounds like a lot, but let's say that you're 300 pounds, then that's a 30 pound loss. So they say even something like that could significantly improve it. And if you have even more weight loss, if you get down to a healthy weight, then in some cases it can actually cure it. Because all that happens is that that extra weight isn't on your throat anymore. And it's not really your throat. It's it's the muscles in your in your mouth, in your soft palate, in your throat, like that entire throat little neck little area, um, that it relaxes. And when you have extra weight on you, then there's extra fat, which I keep saying weight, but it weighs it down and will actually pull it down and block off that airway again. So for some of you that are out there that may be going through this, um, I'm sure that your doctors told you anyway before you got your machine to lose the weight. And hopefully you're getting to a stage now where this is helping, that you've started to lose some weight and that, you know, not to try sleeping without it, obviously, until your doctor says it's okay. But you might be getting to a point where you're finding that you are sleeping more, that um, maybe you have tried sleeping without the machine, and it is working. Um, I generally sleep on my side anyway. I don't have a machine or anything, and I, as far as I know, I don't have sleep apnea. I mean, I wake up every now and then um, at night, but that's just, I've always been that way as a kid, even. Um, and I don't think it's from that. Um, as they say... Everyone does this. Everyone wakes up at some point throughout the night, and I'm not waking up, you know, hourly. So at least I know that much. Um, or if I am, I'm not remembering it, which I highly doubt. But um, for those of you that, you know, are running into sleeping issues and stuff like this, um, the machine apparently does help quite a bit. You might be getting to a stage now where you've lost some weight and, you know, you haven't needed the machine, things like that. Um... I really don't have a lot of experience with this because these are now sort of delving into physical and medical things that I haven't really run into. Um, but so I'm trying to think of there's a cat hair on my face. But, but it's something that I think that we should probably address because there are probably a lot of you out there that are running into this. Um, and there are a number of other medical things that we're going to be touching on as well. This is not for medical advice, obviously. Go to a doctor if you want medical advice. Uh, my nose is silly. Sorry, very distracting. <laughs> um, yeah, go to your doctor if you have if you need medical advice. Don't take it from YouTube by anyone on YouTube. Go to your doctor, have them poke around and look at you and things like that. But it's something that we're going to actually bring up from time to time um, because, as I say, we've sort of done the emotional aspect of it and the social aspect, and we haven't really focused on a lot of the physical stuff. And so this is mainly just sort of like a, a live Wikipedia entry. Take it with as much information as you would get from Wikipedia. Um, that this is just what I have found. Um, and it's very, very basic. If you find that you are having problems sleeping, though, certainly go to your doctor. They can test you. They can put you on little machines and everything else and find out if it's actually happening or if you're just an insomniac, one or the other. But overall, everything that I've found um, does point towards weight loss as being a primary cause of this type of sleep apnea. Um, there are a number of other ones, obviously, but given what we're focusing on here, this is what I sort of want to look at. And it's just one of a, of a large number of medical problems that we run into. Um, and it's not to say, oh, poor us, you know, they're so sick and everything else. It's, I mean, these are, again, these are caused by our habits by what we've done to ourselves. 
And if you're at a stage now where you've started doing this stuff and you're starting to find to see a little bit of progress and maybe you still need the, the machine, maybe you actually do have sleep apnea and you still need it, keep using it. Just losing 10% of your body weight is not going to cure your sleep apnea. Um, again, go to an actual doctor, someone who's gone to school longer than I've been alive, and have them look at you. And they'll be able to tell you when you're ready to come off the machines and everything else. But it's just sort of one of those things that maybe we don't all deal with on a daily basis, but a large number of us do. You see it more and more. It's a much more common thing than, um, you know, some of the rarer things that happen to us, um, like gout and diabetes and all that. Well, diabetes, actually, no, that's fairly common as well. I sh probably should have started off with that. But um, it was just one of those things that, um, I've got a friend of mine that sort of ran into that as well. Um, it wasn't exactly sleep apnea, but it was his uvula, your little throaty hangy ball that was causing problems. And he had a, I'm not sure you call it, uvula ectomy? Um, he had it removed anyway, um, which helped a great deal. So it just sort of, there are little things like that that, I mean, we all know that there are things they always say, oh, heart disease and cardiovascular problems and diabetes. Like, these are the big major things that everyone always associates with it. But there are some little things that go along with it as well. And for those of you that have this, it's probably not a little thing. But there are other issues that pop up from time to time that you don't really see, you don't really hear about. And I think this is probably one of them because who are you going to tell? You're going to say to your friends, oh, I, don't, I didn't sleep well. They aren't going to say, well, it's because you're too fat and your throat is too big and it's sinking into your windpipe. You need to fix that. It's just, it's one of those things that I think anyway, we sort of take for granted. Um, that every now and then you'll have a bad night's sleep or you snore. Snoring is another big thing. If you find that you're snoring a lot or if your husband or wife or whoever notices that you snore, then have them take a look because apparently that is a big warning sign as well. Um... Snoring is mainly just every now and then there's turbulence, I guess you would call it, <laughs> that there is that slight blockage so the ear can't get all the way through. Um, but generally sleep apnea is one of those things that if you just hear them stop breathing and then they sort of snuffle themselves awake again, then, you know, that would warrant looking into. This is really all over the place and very horribly put together. I do apologize. But again, it's one of those subjects I'm not educated on. It's one of those things that, these are things that, I mean, I can put the links in below as well, to uh, Johns Hopkins, to uh, Harvard Medical, and the Mayo Clinic. Um, I tr tend to go to those three spots to look for information on these things because they are actual medical sites. Um, I don't really, I mean, I'll put up something for Wikipedia for bugs or something interesting, but if you're looking for actual information um, that you know is going to be, you know, good, <laughs> then go to a real website um, and not WebMD or anything like that. Go to some place that is, this is what they do. So um, I'll put th those links down below so you can take a look at them. If you find that you do have trouble sleeping, whatever the reason, certainly go see your doctor, have them take a look at you and you never know. Maybe you need it, maybe you don't. Um, maybe you'll be able to wear your little Darth Mater mat. Darth Mater? Yes, there we go. I've just mixed cars and Star Wars. Uh, Darth Vader mask. I should really start this over. I'm not going to. <laughs> I have lost so much credit with my friends regarding these things now. Just, and nerds across the world that are watching, the two of them. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, early morning, trying to get this done. I'm still, I'm wide awake, but apparently can't talk. So I can lisp and say Darth Vader and everything is great. So, we're trying to do a very serious topic, very serious, serious medical terms and everything else, and now I'm lisping and saying Darth Mater. Ah, it's a great morning so far. It's going to be a good day. I don't want to go to work, but I have to. But, anyway, let's sort of summarize everything, recap, regroup so I can speak properly, so I don't look like a twit any more than I have to, but, again, um, I didn't, don't know if I even explained this properly for anyone, but if you are using one of those machines, certainly keep using it. If it's helping, then keep going. Um, but there is that aspect of it as well that, and 
Like I say, every single medical opinion is the same. Losing weight will help. Whether it's 5 or 10% of your body weight, which is a fairly significant amount of weight to lose. But if you can continue on with that, they do say that there will come a time when, you know, if obesity is the issue, obviously, that when you lose enough weight, it will actually cure it. Because all that it is that your throat doesn't have the, the muscle to keep it from collapsing in on itself. And that's mainly because there's so much extra weight on it, whether it's from fatty deposits or just because you have extra skin. It's, there are a number of different things that can cause it. But once we get down to where we need to be, then at least that aspect of it can be taken care of. Now, like I say, this isn't just obesity that causes this. Thin people get this as well. There are a number of different causes. But they say that that is a big one. That, ha ha, boom boom um, That losing the weight will help in some cases we'll get rid of it entirely and then you can chuck away your mask once that's all done if your doctor says it's okay so i'm not even sure if we really explored this very deeply uh, we sort of explained what it was explained the machine a little bit um you can go up and look at the different uh, links below and if you want to learn a little bit more information but again if you're running into something like this definitely go to your doctor first don't just go to him and say i have sleep apnea Go to them and say, okay, you know what? I'm having trouble sleeping. I'm waking up a lot through the night. I have headaches every single day, and I'm constantly tired, and it might be something. They, there are tests they can run. They have little monitors for your fingers and your throat and everything else that they can do just to make sure because there's no point in you wearing a giant strap-on mask and trying to look like Bane throughout the night when no one's watching. So that's it, though, for this one. Um, very poorly put together. I do apologize. <laughs> But again, it's not a subject that I'm really confident in because I haven't looked into it very deeply. Um, it's just sort of one of those things that I figure that we can all at least appreciate, even if we don't have it, that you can look at and go, yeah, I can sort of see where that's happening. And if you've run into something like this, maybe it's going to prompt you to go and take a closer look at it. So we'll do these every now and then. Um, not necessarily delving really deeply into medical things, just sort of bringing it up. And if it's something that I've experienced, then certainly I'll share that with you as well. Um, aside from me sort of waking up every once in a while, I don't think it's really, I shouldn't really say that. I don't think it's really classified as sleep apnea um, because the, by definition it has to be at least five times an hour. And I'm not waking up that often. I know that. Um, I'll wake up a couple of times throughout the night, but that's pretty much it. And I sleep on my side anyway which they say helps. Um, if you're laying on your back, then everything's sort of being pulled down. But if you're on your side or in your stomach, sometimes that will help. Um, so I may have it. I've never really looked at it. I haven't been to a doctor in a very, very long time, which is not very good. They probably should go look. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to keep rambling and keep going on and on and on. I want to try to cut these down a little bit more. Um, I tried that again yesterday and it went for half an hour, so sorry. But I'm going to try to condense these into 15 minutes, make them a little easier to digest. Uh -huh. and maybe keep me on point a little bit more than I normally do. But when I start lisping and misnaming characters and everything else, then I can't help it. I have to comment on it. I can't just pretend it didn't happen. Because <laughs> I hate it. But I don't want to start over. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, please poke the like button for me. And in the meantime, keep yourself warm and fuzzy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.